microwave bench yes parameters and directional coupler measurements series on microwave engineering lecture number 6.19 microwave bench is a waveguide run with a source at one end and a terminating load at the other end in between source and load there exists several components like isolator attenuator wave meter standing wave detector and maybe some more depending upon the quantity of measurement in the waveguide run several parameters can be measured in fact the bench is used to measure to find parameters like swr frequency impedance etc it is also useful in finding the s parameters or the s matrix of a junction device provided the device is an ideal reciprocal one it can also be used to measure the performance indices of directional coupler in the present session the focus is on measurement of s parameters measurement of performance indices of a directional coupler using micro bench now let us move further to the course session where the description an elaborate description of s parameter measurements and directional coupler measurements are given let us start with a few introductory remarks on s parameters the scattering parameters are complex quantities complex quantity implies it has magnitude as well as phase it is not difficult to understand the fact that measuring two quantities is certainly complicated when compared to measuring a single quantity another aspect is measurement of phase is somewhat laborious somewhat involved process when compared to measuring voltage current or some other quantity because of these two reasons measurement of complex quantities measurement of scattering parameters it is really and actually a difficult process it requires one meter called a network analyzer to measure s parameter but when the device is an ideal reciprocal one with the equal arm lengths then s parameters become pure real quantities what he is telling is the junction for which we want to measure s parameters if it is an ideal one if it is a reciprocal one if its arm lengths are equal then s parameters for such device they become pure real hence their measurement becomes quite easy simple the procedure to find s matrix with the bench is illustrated here by finding the matrix f of an ideal magic t as power meters are not usually available wave guide detector crv combination is used to measure relative powers in case of magic t ideal magic t the s matrix is given by 1 by root 2 0 0 1 1 0 0 minus 1 1 1 minus 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 this is for ideal junction if we get a matrix by measurement then comparing it with this particular matrix we can have some idea regarding the correctness that is there in the measurement process that is followed by us in the description of the procedure we use a particular port numbering that numbering is shown here 1 and 2 ports are collinear or ports third port is or port number 3 is e arm port whereas 4 is h arm port s parameter measurement is a multi step process step 1 measure the output of a source v in we have to use a source measure the output of source 
the settings of the source and attenuator should not be changed until the completion of the experiment. The source may be reflex klystrom or it may be gun oscillator. Its output should be measured. And the settings of the source and attenuator should not be changed until the completion of the experiment. Step two, give input to port one and measure output at ports two, three, and four while maintaining match determinations at other ports. Let them be V21, V31, V41. Notice V in, V21, V31, V41. These are voltages. Voltages proportional to the power of the wave. Step 3. Give input to port 3 and measure output at ports 1, 2, and 4 while maintaining match determinations at other ports. Let them be V13, V23, V43. Now, S parameter S31, it can be found from the ratio V31 to V in under square root. S21 can be found from square root of V21 by V in. S41 can be found from square root of V41 by V in. S23, it can be found from square root of V23 by V in. S43 can be found from square root of V43 by V in. As the device is reciprocal, S31 is S13, S21 is S12, etc. Then the diagonal elements of the S matrix can be found using unity property. If the measurements are correct, then diagonal elements must be zeros. But notice under no circumstances the S matrix obtained by measurement can be same as the S matrix obtained through analytical means. Always there exists some difference. If measurements are done carefully with the utmost attentiveness, then the difference between measured one and calculated one, it is less. Otherwise, it is more. But under no circumstances, they become exactly same. Now we move to second part of this session where we consider measurement of coupling factor, directivity and isolation pertaining to a directional coupler. The measurement procedures of these parameters with the bench are described here. The procedure is described with respect to the port numbering given in the figure. That figure one can see in the next slide. Port 1 is input port, 2 is decoupled port, 3 is coupled port and 4 is through port. This is somewhat standard port numbering. Throughout the experiment, assume that port 2 is permanently match terminated. What is 2? It is decoupled port. Here is a shown a picture of directional coupler. 1 is input port, 2 is a decoupled port, 3 is coupled port, 4 is through port. The symbol of directional coupler along with the numbering is shown in B. With respect to this port numbering, we are going to describe, discuss the procedure employed for measuring directional coupler performance indices. To begin with, measure the output power of the source and let it be P in. In case of non-availability of power meter, waveguide detector CRO combination can be used to obtain a voltage which is proportional to the power. Let this voltage be V in. In the second step, connect the source to port 1 and a match termination to port 3 of directional coupler. Measure the power output at port 4 and let it be PC. If the voltage proportional to power is measured using waveguide detector CRO combination, then let it be VC. In the next step, connect the source to port 3 and a match termination to port 1 of the directional coupler. Measure the output power at port 4 and let it be PD. 
if the voltage proportional to power is measured using waveguide detector CRO combination, then let it be VD. In the fourth step, connect the source to the port 1 and a match termination to port 4 of the DC. Measure the output power at port 3 and let it be PT. If the voltage proportional to power is measured using waveguide detector CRO combination, then let it be VT. Notice VT is proportional to PT. VD is proportional to PD because the detector is a square law device. Last step involves the calculation of required parameters from the values of measured quantities. The coupling in dB can be computed as C in dB, 10 log P in by PC. But V in is proportional to P in, VC is proportional to PC. Therefore, P in to PC ratio can be replaced by P into VC ratio. Directivity in dB can be computed as D in dB is 10 log PC by PD. This is actually definition of directivity in dB. But VC is proportional to PC, VD is proportional to PD. Therefore, PC to PD ratio can be replaced by VC to VD ratio. The isolation in dB can be computed as I in dB equal to 10 log P in to PD ratio. This is definition. The ratio of P in to PD can be replaced by V in to PD. Coupling factor, directivity I then can be computed using the obtained voltages or powers by measurements. If all the measurements involved are correct, then isolation must be equal to sum of coupling and directivity. So it's a cross check. If I happens to be sum of C and D, then it is an indication that the measurements are done properly. Measurements are done following correct or appropriate procedures or steps. Precaution, once the power output of the source P in is measured, the settings of the source attenuator or waveguide detector should not be altered until the completion of the entire measurement process. These are some of the things which I want to share with you regarding the measurement of test parameters, regarding the measurement of performance indices of directional coupler. Well, the session is an enriching learning experience for you. And for now, see you again later in another session. Bye-bye.